I'm tuning today a very nice Bechstein Model B, um, probably 1890s, um, uh, which uh, I particularly enjoy. It's a lovely instrument. Um, and um, these instruments are, with gate legs, are very out of fashion nowadays. They shouldn't be. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, and um, it's probably early 20th century. Um, and I'm going to try a couple of new things. I'm going to test I, uh, the Peterson Strobo, I Strobo tuner as against my normal tuner. And the first thing is calibration is very odd. I've calibrated this, but this has been calibrated. It's set to 440. But that's showing sharp. So I think I need to set that. So I think I need to set that to something else. And um, uh, uh, um, and um, uh, somebody else I know has had similar difficulties. So we'll set it to 442 and see if that deals with it. Um, settings, I strobo soft, um, see what that does. So, no, still going that way. Um, tuner settings, 442.5. Right there. Tuner settings. Let's try point eight. Still moving. Uh, so this is the TLA CTS five, which is the gold standard of tuners. Um, 442, 443. Okay, so it seems to be 443 is actually 440. Um, but we'll see what happens. Now, this instrument um, is one string is, so the near left hand string is perfectly on. The middle string is flat, and this is why I like the Paps wedge because we can ident uh, easily get at those. And that one's slightly sharp. And let's get the camera there. And um, I'm going to test uh, both the uh, the strobus the, the I strobo, whatever it is, against the against the uh, CTS five. We'll see how that looks. Um, and um, there you are. So we'll see how those behave. And I'm going to guess try another technique as well, which involves tuning just two strings then moving on to the next note, tune, doing two strings, and then doing the unison of the one back. Um, put this on to automatic. Is that on automatic? Uh, so tuning, automatic. Um, and it's the Beckstein with this bar across that makes it very convenient to use the Perhaps wedge, so that's why the ha habit has developed. Um, but um, I'm going to use this, which I can uh, put between the strings. So I'm going to do the left hand strings. The left hand string we know is fine. So I'm going to, because I've measured that left hand string, I'm going to, why is that mm, sand from Greece or God knows what? I need to clean that. Um, so I'm going to tune that by ear. Oh, that's loose. So I've let that go past, and I'll let that drop back. I'm just 
pushing it back gently. It's moving very easily, so setting the pin. So I'm going to try the other method of doing it this way and, and really, these are in the way which is but oh, I really don't like this position of the lever. Now, and then one pushes that down, so it springs up. This instrument isn't behaving in a way that wants to do that. So I'm going to take that down a lot, move it up in one. good enough for this purpose. Um, so I'm going to go to the next note and put the tune the left hand string of those two. So that's the left hand string. And according to that, it says Nero's damn it there, so I'm going to leave it there, I'm afraid. I'm not going to believe that. Let's do the unison. Wow, wow, wow. That's a phase change. I wonder if I can use it slightly better. So let's 
so that's the two left hand strings in tune and the right hand one which we've got to get better. technique needs practice. Let's check the next note above. Ah, so we did the left hand string exactly. Let's check it. Okay, now the two together. string this is got a creep on it that's different to that that looks okay so now we'll do that unison you can hear that's not quite right change on the note so it's not surprising perhaps we've got a phase change on that unison but it's slightly flat, slightly creeping flat there so we'll creeping flat perhaps I'll have the confidence to tune to this one day and try it best the machine I know right? so here we can hear that phase change Doing that unison is horrible. Let's do it by machine. 
so we're going to do the centre string by itself. There we are. Pops out. See how that comes as a unison. Go back to that right hand string here. You can hear that slightly amiss, slightly sharp. This is right hand string of. Oh, I did that one. Okay. So, well, it looks a possible technique. Um, I'm going to get on and tune this instrument. Um, I'm not terribly happy about this. You can hear the inharmonicity of the strings. That's the uh, second harmonic. And that's the third harmonic and that's the fourth harmonic. So you can see inharmonicity in action on this app. Um, might try this on some lower notes, but I'm going to get on and tune this in the best way I can, as quickly as I can, because I can't spend all day doing a video. See you later. Okay, I'm relenting. I'm going to just turn this on to do a waltz and all tuning in my normal way and well, I'll experiment the other techniques eventually. <laughs> Hopefully, if you're just starting tuning or you're interested in tuning, this will just point some indicators as to what you're listening for and the combination of ear and machine. So this is the... I've tuned the left-hand string. This is the central string. No, I haven't. Left-hand string is fine. So I'm now tuning... It's stable as it is, so I'm going to leave it as the right hand string. Oh, this is that shows the creep and sharp. shows us creeping left and that shows a creeping sharp so I'm going to so that's the two might be both creeping sharp but they're not in tune so uh, let's tune this for unisons
that's going to be stable. Let's do the right hand two strings. Up. And that's stable. So So that note in there is not stable. So machine, this is the left string, creeping sharp. Right hand, sorry, unisons. Right hand. 
also a fine. Let's do the left hand one. I heard a click then on the middle one. Is that still there? Yep, that's fine. So left hand one. fourth bite there. listening for just on the transit
looking for is how that bottom resultant note sings. Um, let's see how that's done. That's on the E. It appears to be flat. So. One's got to actually tune fifths by a different way, and I'm still learning. So I don't always want to rely on the machine. Now, however, uh, let's get on with the tuning.
because these are jumping slightly, I'm not going to be too fussy. Um, um, one should possibly put some Potec oil on the bearing felts on the agrax, making sure it doesn't go anywhere near the tuning points. That's rather nasty, damp sound. I don't mind spending extra time on this octave because this is the most important octave of the whole instrument. Slightly left. That's the middle string, left hand string. That's okay. Right hand string. Okay, so middle string.
it's okay. This is an old piano, it's not perfect. Thank you. 
center with the left. That's flat. So both of those are flat. Jumpy pins, I'm not going to play with that. Looks good. Perhaps a little bit sharper. Okay, so centre string is fine. Slight 
keep bright. So it is the perfect fifth required for the unequal tangent. This is why I wonder whether it's possible to do this by ear. Creeping flat. So let's...
strangers there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. two octaves again get on with this fast um, so until next time but I hope that introduction to seeing how we can tune these fifths by air and the other machines mm, interesting cheers <laughs>